Welcome back to another Pilgrim's Progress. This week, after Christian and Faithful had been helping each other, they saw a really tall, good-looking, strong guy in front of them. And when they caught up with him, he started talking. And Faithful asked him, you going to the Celestial City? He said, yeah, yeah. Faithful said, oh, same here, same here. Perhaps we could help each other on the way. And this man said, well, I love talking about good things. If we're going to talk, let's talk about good things. It's rare. You don't often find anyone who wants to talk about the things of heaven. Faithful agreed. He was, well, yeah, what's better than that? What's better than talking about the things of God? And this man just started talking again. Oh, I love to talk about all the things in the Bible. The best things to talk about are found in there. Talking about... It does us so much good talking. You can get all sorts of knowledge and understanding about all sorts of things. You can understand how pointless earthly things are. You can understand the help from heaven. You can learn that you have to be born again by talking. All the things we do for God are not enough. You can understand that by talking. You can understand what it is to repent and pray and believe in the king. You can learn to get rid of everything that's wrong by talking. Faithful was quite impressed. He said, yeah, all these things are true. Talkative said, yeah, but the sad thing is so there's so few people, not many people actually understand these things. They don't, they never read the books. They never get this understanding. Faithful agreed but said but it is God who shows us these things this man said well yeah of course I know I know faithful said well what, what do you want to talk about what should we talk about and the man just said anything I'll talk about everything heaven earth our journey to the celestial city what's happened in the past what's going to happen in the future things that are good things that are bad you you choose I'll talk about anything up until now, Christian had been walking by himself a little way ahead. So Faithful was a, getting a bit suspicious of this man and thought he should check him out with Christian. So he went and asked him. He said, our new friend seems really brave, doesn't he? He seems like, he seems like he'd be a good friend on the journey, don't you think? Christian answered very strongly, he's like, no, he'll, he'll confuse 20 people, like put them under a spell with his words. Anyone who doesn't know him is so convinced by what he says, he, he's led so many people astray. Faithful said, why do you know him? Christian said, yeah, he's from our old city, have you never heard of him, have you never seen him? His name is Talkative, and he's the son of Saywell. And they lived in Prating Row. Just went on and on and on, really. But Faithful said he seems good, though. He's tall and he's strong and he, he stands above everyone else. Christian said, I know, but he'll talk like that, whoever he's with. He'll talk like this while he's with us, pilgrims and Christians. But then when he's in the pub and he's sat on by the bar and he's drunk, he'll, he'll talk about anything like this with them as well. Religion has no place in his heart. Following the king has no place in his heart. All he does is talk, 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 talk. Faithful said, well, I, I couldn't. But what he talks about is seems good. Krishna said, yeah, but there's no real prayer. He doesn't rely on the king. He doesn't trust. He doesn't actually live it out. Outside his home, he appears all good to everyone else. But inside, he's like a devil. He's always cross, always angry, not very loving, really selfish. His poor family, he's one thing outside, but another thing inside is terrible. He's caused so many people to trip up on their, on their journey to the celestial city. Faithful said, oh, I have to believe you. You're a good friend. Krishna said, I know it's hard. I would have fallen for it too. But I realized by reading our book, saying and doing, talking and living are two really different things. He thinks just hearing and then talking will make him a good Christian. But no, 
He has to live it out. It's not just hearing and talking. It's doing it. It's following the king like we've been doing, not just talking about it. Faithful said, oh, I was, I was getting pretty annoyed with... He just went on and on and on, getting pretty sick of him. What can we do to get rid of him? Christian said, there's only one way. Ask him about the power of the king in his heart, in his house, and in his life. So Faithful went back to the man now he knew was talkative. And talkative butted in, as he again just kept talking. I thought we'd be talking by now. Faithful said, well, you did let me choose, so I just wanted to check with my friend what we should talk about, what would be the most useful thing. So Faithful said, this is what I want to talk about. What is the proof? What's the evidence? How can you show? How do we know when someone is following the king when they're a Christian? Talkative said, Oh, when you start to cry out against everything that's wrong, against sin. And Faithful said, Well, no, no, hang on a minute. The king says it's when you feel guilty for your own sin. Everyone hates it when wrong things are said against them that just aren't true. Everyone hates it when someone's horrible to them or bullies them. And everyone calls out when there's wrong things. But no, it has to be more personal. It has to be about your the things you've done wrong you feel sorry for. Anyway, what what else? What's another proof? Talkative didn't take long. Well, it's, it's when you have a great knowledge of all different mysteries, when you understand all these deep, clever things. And Faithful said, whoa. Hang on, no. You can understand all sorts of stuff and have a great knowledge and talk without actually the king having worked in your heart at all. It's not what you know, the king says, but it's how you live it out. Talkative started to get flustered. and No, I, no you've not got it right. You, you might even be lying. I, no, I don't think so. Faithful said, all right, well... Show me something else. Talkative was getting quite angry. No, no, it's pointless. We won't agree on anything. We're just different. Like, I, I know what I know. I know what I understand. I know what I hear. And I just like to talk about it. We won't agree, so it's pointless. Faithful said, well, hang on. Let me explain. Talk says, oh, go, go ahead. Faithful said, look, you have to have, like, this conviction you have to feel that you've done wrong, all the things you've done wrong, like Christian with that rucksack weighing you down. You've got to realise that you need to be treated not like you deserve. You need a new heart. You need to be made new in the inside. You, you need to start hungering after the King to save you. You need that experience of actually trusting Him. And when you have, your life will show it. Have you got all this, Talkative? Have you? Talkative blushed. I, I didn't expect to be talking about that. That's a bit deep, isn't it? I'm, I'm not bound by you. You're not in control of me. How, how do you have any right to say that to me? You're not my judge. And he got all flustered and flustered. And, and Faithful said, the problem is you're just so full of talk. That's all it is. You might get angry. But you need to show it by your life. And talkative was just like, oh, you're just so serious. You're just, oh, you, you're no fun at all. And he just got really angry. Christian turned to Faithful to try and help and encourage him. And he said, listen, it's only talkative who's losing out, really. Don't be too discouraged. And then they saw an amazing sight. They saw Evangelist catching up with them. And that was brilliant. They both, after talking with Talkative for so long, go around in circles, they love to see evangelists. And Christian said, oh, it's so good to see you. Thank you for catching up with us. And Faithful said, oh, old friend, your words have stayed with us all this time. Evangelist said, how has it gone? How have your travels been? And Christian Faithful explained. And Evangelist said, I'm not pleased to hear that you've, you've faced so many bad things, but I am really pleased here that you're still standing. And he encouraged them, keep going on. There'll be an amazing reward if you don't give up following the king. Set your faces like flint. Be determined. Don't let anybody stop you following him. 
and Christian and Faithful were so refreshed after talking to talkers here for going round in circles. They said to Evangelist, tell us more, help us for our journey ahead. And Evangelist said, well, you're going to come to a town and this town is called Vanity and in that town there's this fair which lasts all year, Vanity Fair, and there's all sorts of terrible things. If you thought the Valley of Humiliation and the Valley of the Shadow of Death was bad, wait until you reach the town of vanity. One or both of you may have to seal your testimonies of following the king with blood. You may have to die. That's how bad it could be. But be faithful to the point of death and the king will give you the crown of life. It will be better in one way than your friend if you die because you'll reach the celestial city first and you'll you'll escape so many trials and sadness that lies ahead but you need to commit yourselves to your faithful creator be encouraged trust him no matter what happens and even though they were shaken up and a bit scared they decided that's what they do they commit themselves to their king because their king had died for him they were going to follow him no matter what it took but looking around, it was all quiet. Talkative had vanished. He was gone. He didn't want anything to do with that. So they carried on their way, thinking about evangelist's words towards vanity. And if you want to find out what happens, you're going to have to tune in next time. So we're going to go back through... Uh, today's story to see what Jesus wants us to learn and it's really just a couple of things but maybe from different angles um, talkative he looks good he, he's tall he's strong he's handsome and he, he'll talk about anything and faithful and Christian well faithful sort of gets taken in to start with though he's a bit suspicious about faithful because he just talks and talks and talks and talks and talks. And he looks good because he's, he seems concerned about people who don't understand about Jesus, who don't understand about the Bible, who don't understand about God and things about heaven. He seems concerned. He seems to want to talk about good things. And to start with, it seems good. But the more they go on, the more faithful starts to get suspicious and that's why he checks it out with, with Christian. Because um, talkative is just going on and on and on. And But Christian knows him. And he's from the same town, the city of destruction that they're from. And he knows him for who he really is. That actually he can talk big. But his life isn't backed up with action it's just all words and Jesus warns us about that he says these people draw close to me with their lips but their hearts are far from me so talkative is a warning for us it doesn't matter what we can explain about the Bible what we can understand about all the different clever mysteries and difficult things we can talk and talk and talk. We can we can understand what Jesus has done for us. We can talk about what Jesus has done for us. We can talk about praying. We can talk about repenting. We can talk about trusting and believing Jesus. We can talk about having peace with God and all these different things. But the danger is, if it's just talk, it doesn't do anything for us. It doesn't do anything. And Christian has to say... Yeah, his life is very different to how he talks. He talks a big game, but actually his life is bad. And if you go and look how he is in his family, it's very, very different. So it's, it's a real warning for us not to be people who can just talk about the Bible and God, but who actually live out what Jesus says. There's a huge difference between being full of talking and actually living it out. Faithful nearly falls into the trap, but Christian's aware and he manages to rescue him. So we need to help each other 
not to be just talking endlessly about all sorts of different things and arguments in the Bible about gifts and all these different things and making them the big things. But we need to be living and following Jesus. That's why Christians said to faithful, let's get right to the heart of it. Literally, let's get to talkative's heart and let's see what he knows about Jesus' power in his heart, in his home and in his life. And when it came to it, he knew nothing. He could talk. But when it got onto this real heart stuff like did he know Jesus in his heart has he been born again has he been made a new person does he think differently does he live differently to before he gets exposed and he feels all embarrassed but he gets angry and he he comes up with all sorts of things to make Christian and faithful feel rubbish and so we need to be on our guard not just in ourselves but in others Others can be so full of talking and talking about all these mysteries and different things. But Jesus says it's only by their fruit that you will know them. What do their lives look like? Do they live out what they say? If not, it could be they're not really a Christian at all. And we have to speak to them about their heart, about trusting Jesus. It's not just good enough to have a general thing. We need to know Jesus in our hearts for ourselves. Otherwise, we can convince ourselves we're doing well when we're not doing well at all. And sadly, we've met so many people like this. Let's really make sure we're not one of them, that we really know Jesus in our heart. And when he speaks to us, that we don't just talk about it. We actually pray. We actually trust him. We actually walk with him and follow him. An evangelist comes and encourages them to go on and we need the help of other Christians who speak Jesus's truth to us and help us to follow Jesus and he warns them about vanity fair that one of them might die and that sometimes is the price that Jesus says we must pay for following him Christians all over the world today are laying down their lives for trusting in Jesus they are going straight to glory in heaven, but they're not dead. Jesus says they live on forever with him. And it's like going home to be with him forever. And we have to be prepared. Jesus was prepared to die for us. We have to be prepared to follow him, even if that's where it leads. And he says, but if it leads there, you'll be with Jesus in heaven. So they go on their way. They're a bit nervous. But talkative, you can see, he wasn't really serious about following Jesus at all. He just wanted to talk about it. When it actually came to the trials, he was nowhere to be found. And that's a good way of telling. If you have really trusted in Jesus, that you'll be prepared to follow him no matter where it goes. Let's be people who love Jesus with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, all our life. And we're willing to lose our lives for him to get a better life, a life that lasts forever. Let's not be so full of talk that when it actually gets difficult and we have to live for him, we don't know what we're doing. Let's avoid that danger and trust in him. If you don't know Jesus, call on him today and he would love to save you. So here's some Bible study you can do about the danger that Jesus warns us about. Isaiah 29, Ezekiel 33, Matthew 15. It comes up a lot in the Bible. What is the danger that we can face and why is it so bad? Matthew chapter 7. How can we tell if we or others are all just talk? And then James 1. How can we avoid this danger? We don't want to be like that. We want to be people who live out our lives for Jesus. And then Revelation 2.10. How far do we have to be ready to go as we follow Jesus? Then you can add talkative and evangelist to your map. And then think about, in the Bible, is there anyone who talks big but doesn't live as big as they talk? How does Jesus help them? See you next time.